wouldn't be here either. So yes. <laughs> totally understand. So um, I'm going to let you add people, Christine, as they come in. That will be great. Uh, so uh, welcome, everybody, to our weekly Monday Mastermind of the New England region uh, of RRC. Um, it's so great to see everybody. And again, we are uh, all six states in New England of the Residential Real Estate Council. My name is Lisa Parento. I am your president this year for the region. And I'm joined always by my right hand and our CTO, Christine McClellan, who it says N-E-R-R-R-C, but she's really Christine McClellan, an amazing realtor on the South Shore. Looks like Nora Lynch just joined us. She's our education chair. We've got people from across the country um, that are joining us today. And I am thrilled to death to introduce Brad McCallum, who is our special guest this morning or this afternoon. Brad comes to us from Calgary, uh, uh, Alberta, Canada. And I, we met Brad um, when we were doing our um, clubhouse room on luxury real estate resort and second home. Brad came on actually for a two-part series on kind of how he found himself now being a luxury agent in his market when it really kind of was not his intent, but how he how he's grown an amazing luxury real estate business using video. And he really broke it down pretty simply in some ways. And that's why I wanted to invite him on this morning to sort of talk about, you know, what, what that process is like. And so Brad, we got about 30 minutes. Um, we cool. usually, yeah, we have a nice group of agents. They continue to come on until like 20 after 12. It's just hysterical because everyone just kind of, I think is grabbing lunch and popping on. Um, and then we post this on our YouTube channel, but we usually do maybe about 15, 20 minutes uh, or so of your content. And then we really open it up for questions because it really is kind of a mastermind, but we try cool. to bring people a lot smarter than us, which you qualify for, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome. I'm going to turn it over to you, mute myself, and uh, we can't wait. All right. All right. Hey, first off, I want to say thank you so much, guys, for having me on today. Um, super excited to be here. Honestly, talking about video marketing is probably one of my favorite things on earth to do because it's completely transformed my business. Um, there's a lot of things I think we all know as agents uh, that make our own individual businesses successful that maybe don't translate so well to others. Maybe it's just a network that we're part of. It's a, it's a, you know, a sport that we maybe coach for our kids. There's a whole bunch of different things that work. So the one thing I hate is when you know, gurus or experts come on and say, this is what you got to do in your business because you don't got to do it. Um, the reality is though, uh, we all are in this very simple business where the more people that we get to meet and the more people that get to know us and really know us, the more likely we'll be able to do business with them. And so what I realized very, very early on is that video marketing, especially when you really focus on being your authentic self, video marketing is your way to scale your sphere of influence. And so when we think of scale, it's, it's about being able to have people get to know who you are, get to like you, get to trust you, get to get excited to meet you. All of these things happen when people watch your videos. Now, these are things that would normally otherwise happen just when, you know, when we meet them at the grocery store or we're in lineup at the coffee shop, right? Or we're at an open house. This is normally when we make these relationships. But when we want to grow our business, we really have to grow our sphere of influence. And so the only way to grow that sphere of influence um, at scale in a meaningful way without just putting ad money behind it is to be yourself in front of more people. And so that's really what I focused on from, uh, from the very beginning. And I also tried to focus my, my, my marketing around the message that I really cared about the homes that I was selling. I was investing my advertising dollars, my expertise, my time, my energy into selling the listings that I were uh, representing. And I did so by focusing on doing high-end, high-quality listing video tours. So if you don't know who I am, completely uh, forgiven for that. Yeah, you shouldn't know who I am. Um, but the reality is, is we've had a lot of success now uh, over YouTube, over our real estate videos. Uh, and all of it is because we put the emphasis on the home and we're just the guides. We're not the heroes. So we always make the home, uh, home the heroes. Now, the reason why that's so important 
um, is because if you want to grow your business, uh, too often, I find that agents ask themselves the wrong question. Uh, they say, how do I get more clients? Right? Or how do I get more buyers? Or how do I get more listings? When the real question that's going to separate you from all of your competition is what's in it for my sellers if they work for me? What's in it for the person that decides to work with Lisa, decides to work with Christine, decides to work with Brad? What's in it? Like what's truly in it? And your answer cannot be because you care about your clients. That, that is not enough because that's to suggest, to suggest that everyone else in your marketplace, all the other agents you're competing with don't care. And that's just not a fact. So what really makes your business different? Um, video marketing is so powerful because when we list our videos and show our listing videos in our marketplace, it, it's completely clear to anyone who watches those videos that we're investing a lot of time and energy and money into those videos and no one else, they're not seeing this marketing on other homes. So they see clearly what's in it for them. I don't have to go out and even tell them, hey, listen, you know, we shoot videos for each one of our listings because they, they already know, they watch the videos and in those videos, they see my wife, they see my kids, um, they see my team, um, they hear us talk about the property, they hear us uh, point out the things that are important about it, the things that our clients, that when they hire us to sell their homes, they say, oh yeah, but you got to remember, we just did the hardwood last year. Well, if, you know, if no one reads that in the MLS write-up, like good good chance getting anyone to even remember that, right? Or, oh, we just did the shingles or, you know, we spent $75,000 on our gorgeous landscaping in our backyard. Well, it's like, who's going to tell their story? Who's going to tell that story? Well, that's what we do in our listing videos. We tell the story of the house and every home has a story. So even if you're in a marketplace where you've got a very average home, there's a story to tell about that home. It's either a story about how amazing the home is, it's a story about who the avatar is, the person that's going to be buying that home, who the, uh, uh, what the community is all about. So in all those cases, we want to focus on telling these homes story. Best way to do that, once again, is a video marketing. And I, I, Lisa mentioned it earlier. I never set out to, do, to, to become a uh, luxury realtor by any means. Uh, about two and a half, three years ago, I was laying tile and hanging drywall and doing renovations. And I just passed 700 GCI on the year, 700,000 in GCI this year. And uh, it, for my family, it's unbelievable. Uh, it makes such a big difference. But the thing is, is that I never asked myself, uh, hey, I want more clients or want more listings or any of that. I thought, hey, I've got a listing. Let's make it look amazing. So I bought some gear and you can kind of see in the background here, I've got gimbals and cameras and lenses and all those things. And it can be totally intimidating at first and you do not need to do it. And you can likely hire a videographer to do it. The point is this, is that we all get these listings. And I see this across the industry. We all get these listings and we think the goal is to just sell the listing and you make the money and we get this beautiful home. Uh, we have this opportunity to serve our clients we have a successful sale. Everyone's happy. Great. Now we need to go find another great home. And that's the whole problem of sort of the cycle of real estate. Um, how do we leverage the listings that we get? Once again, it goes back to video marketing. Uh, so for example, I have videos that I created, shot, edited, posted on YouTube two years ago that still get watched for two to three hours per day. Per day. Like that's an unbelievable number. Um, to give you a bit of a context on this, uh, a year ago, I spoke at uh, Remax's R4 convention, just about 15 months ago. At the time, I was getting about eight hours of watch time in a 24-hour day um, on my YouTube channel. So what that basically means is that this is marketing I've already done, I'm not paying for, it's just people opting into watching that video when it comes up in the feed on YouTube. And... Now, my goal by the end of 2020 was to be at a 24-hour watch day. Now, in June of this year, for every minute that passes, 10 to 12 minutes of our content gets watched. So during this 30-minute meeting today, I will have five or six hours of our videos will be watched, which is a pretty wild, wild number. 
And when you think about that, I showered for those videos, right? My clients, they clean their house for those videos. Um, everything, it was our best. My ums and my ahs and all that stuff were cut out and edited out. And, uh, you know, we still left the, the things that make us human in it. Um, but we also, we had to do it once. And because we did it that one time and put our effort in up front, it gets to live forever now. And that living forever, that long tail, right? You know, we've all gotten that one, we've gotten that one listing, right? Where the buyer comes in from the open house. I'm like, wow, this never happens, right? And then the buyer's like, oh, but I also got to sell my condo. And then you get the condo and then you're like, and you're like, oh, wow, that one deal led to like four or five other deals. Well, here's the goal, right? The goal is with each one of our listings is to leverage it to get at least three to five other deals always. And I know in theory, a lot of gurus have talked about that, but I think really like, what are you doing to do that, right? The, the other way you do that is you send out a just, just sold in the neighborhood. So that way you can let everyone know social proof. We did our marketing. So we sent out this marketing to say, hey, we just sold these homes in your neighborhood, right? Are you curious about the price? And it's always towards them, right? The problem is that we're always initiating that. We're showing up in their mailbox. We're always initiating those calls. And guess what? The difference between uh, a client calling you or you calling a client is you calling a client, you're a salesperson. A client calling you, you're an authority. And being the authority is the goal, right? So when someone sees your content, they see your videos, I can list one video, uh, work to create an awesome video, great marketing for the community. Uh, I always focus a little bit on the community, a little bit of the lifestyle, and then the home tour itself. But putting that all together into one video, think about how powerful that is for every other person that's thinking about selling in that community. They now think, okay, this guy really understands what it's like to live in this community, to live in this uh, area. He really understands the amenities. He understands the draws, the avatar, the people who wants to live here. Um, he really understood how to display that house to make it look great. And when they use compelling video, like uh, compelling uh, cinematography, uh, which is just basically slow motion video. Um, you use great music, right? Which is just not too corporate -y. actually like great royalty free music. There's websites like Music Bed and Epidemic Sound where you pay 10 or $15 a month. You can download all you want. And you put that all together with your tour. And now everyone in that community that sees that understands that you really understand that area and that you know how to represent one of those properties. And guess what? When it's time for them to sell, they want that kind of representation for themselves. And so now we're at a point in our business where we have builders, developers, architects, designers, homeowners, that when they see our videos, they think, wait a second, if we worked with Brad, it would help us reach our goals quicker. It would help our new building look even more attractive. Maybe we're a custom home builder. If Brad showcases our house and does a really great job of it, maybe, maybe other people will choose us as their custom home builder in the future. You see, in each of these cases, we want people to see us as the solution to a problem that they're facing. And so whether it's a, just a home seller that needs a buyer, right, or it's a builder or a designer that wants more clients, the question that I've focused in my business is asking myself every day, what's in it for them if they work with us? And guess what? Because I've focused on that question, other people are asking it. They're asking that question. Hey, if we work with Brad, we could get this kind of exposure for our business. Now, you might think like, it's easy, Brad, because you've got a lot large audience and you've got 12,000 subscribers. But a year ago, I only had 1,000. And a year before that, I had like 150. <laughs> so it, it goes, it, this is like compound interest, where if you've got, if you're getting started and you're doing video, and let's say you've got 50 subscribers on your YouTube channel, and you try to be consistent and release three or four videos per month. And at the end of the month, you've got 62 subscribers and you think, I've spent 20 hours for 12 subscribers. And these are probably just some kids in their basement. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to do this. I don't want to, I don't want to stick around and keep going with my YouTube channel. But the thing is your channel grew by 20 or 25% that month. That's a massive number. Imagine if you could get 20% on your money every month, right? But here's the thing. 
all you got to do is focus on that percentage because I've had many of those months when I would get 15 or 20% growth on my channel. It was nothing to write home about when I was a hundred subscribers and I went up to 120, but when I was 500 and I went up to 600 subscribers that month, I thought, wow, last month I went from 10,000 to 12,100 subscribers. That 20% just keeps growing. So the only thing you should be focusing on is the percentage of growth. And driving that. And now, if you remember, sure, up front, it did take 20 hours to get those 12 subscribers. But guess what? Last month, it only took 20 hours to get the 2,000 subscribers because that is the way compound interest works. So, what we're actually building is a compound interest from your audience. That's what we're building an audience that compounds month after month. And the great thing is, is that we don't even have to worry about all the algorithms and the hashtags and everything else. All we have to do is take our clients' homes, hire a great videographer, or learn some basic skills on, on YouTube to shoot and edit videos. All we have to do is just bring someone in and showcase that property and have some sort of a home for it. A lot of agents look at our YouTube channel for one thing, and what they when they watch us, what they'll see is our whole goal of everything. Um, is even though we love the cinematography and the flashy videos and the smoothness, all of that stuff, there's a lot of agents out there that are, are not putting in quite as much as we do and still have tons of success. There's an agent out of Georgia. She just does home tours with her iPhone. She's got probably 10 times more subscribers than me. Uh, she gets hundreds of thousands of views per video. Um, she's likely making you know five to $10,000 a month passive income just from YouTube ads. Right, like even just on my little channel, we make a thousand dollars a month on it. Um, so if you if you if you think like, okay, well, my stuff can never look like Brad's. Well, my stuff didn't look like Brad's when I was Brad two years ago. <laughs> that's that's the thing. It's you know we as humans we always underestimate. You know we overestimate what we can do in six months and underestimate what we can do in the next decade. And so if you're looking at you know getting out of the business in a in a few years, video is probably not. The strategy other than a little like hey talk to your audience on instagram stories um, but if you're planning on being in this business for a while you're going to want to start investing into creating a bit of an online persona a bit of showcasing these properties talking to your audience and you might think that no one's going to sign up i surely didn't i didn't think anyone was going to sign up but people start to buy in and they start to follow along and they start to get invested. And all those people, doesn't matter who that audience is. They have parents, they've got cousins, they've got uncles. We all know that, right? Everyone is potentially a client. And the last thing I'll say before we open it up to kind of questions, the reason I didn't go into sort of the, the real nuts and bolts of it, because ultimately you want a great quality video, spend three, $400 on one of your listings, go walk around, do a tour with a videographer and have them watch two or three of our videos or some other great content creators out there and just say, hey, this is kind of the pace, the cadence, the energy that we're trying to bring and uh, be in the video. Make sure you're in the video, right? Otherwise, it's just a pretty slideshow and you lose the whole effect of building your brand. But be in the video. Don't pretend to be luxury. I drive a $7,500 Volvo XC90. Um, I don't go to, in suits. I don't even have a full set of teeth. There's a lot of things I could work on, guys. I'm you know, I'm definitely a fixer upper, but the reality is, is I learned, realized that no one cares. The only thing people care about, the only thing they care about is what's in it for them as they should, right? What's in it for them. And so they look at our business model and they see clearly the value. So the more that you can start to create that, the more that you can start to add that in as a piece once a month, even for each of your clients, and you start to put that up on YouTube, you will start to learn lessons that I could talk for hours about that you would have no context. It's once you actually get those videos up onto YouTube, you'll start to be able to look in, in the analytics and be like, oh, they, they fell off after 30 seconds. What did I do? Or, or, you know, the audience viewership started to spike back up a minute in. What did I do at that point in time? And you can start to learn those lessons. There's, it's, it's a process of continuing education. But ultimately, at the end of the day, this is how um, you can create a luxury agency business for yourself if you just purely uh, invest into the selling of each of those listings. Uh, for myself, people drew comparisons between the quality of our content with the price of the home. So while I was selling a five or $600,000 house, 
they were so surprised to see the effort and the care taken to create that video that we started to get the shots at the $700,000, $800,000 homes and then the million dollar homes. And now just a week ago, I listed a four and a half million dollar home, one of maybe five homes in a market of over 5,000 agents and a million people uh, is listed with me. And so the agents, the quote unquote luxury agents in my market are asking themselves like, how do you know Brad? How did Brad get that listing? Why is Brad in that area? And Brad just plays dumb because for the most part, Brad is dumb. Brad just knows that what he did was try to make the home that he was selling, the very thing that they were asking us to do, which was market their home. I never looked at getting the listing as the finish line. I always looked at getting the sale. And so marketing is, is the thing. Um, we did those videos and now all of a sudden people see it, they watch it. And every one of those views becomes social proof that, Hey, you know what? We can give Brad a shot with this property, with our, with our brand, with our company, whatever it might be. So that's a little bit of what I, I had to say. Oh my gosh. So many nuggets. I can't, I don't even know where to start. Actually I wrote down a whole bunch of them. I'm going to summarize at the end, but um, guys put your questions in the chat while you're doing that. I have a basic question, Brad, when you were starting to look at the analytics, you were talking about sort of watching and people were dropping off or whatever, you know, uh, we, uh, we've all got <clears throat> a couple of listings coming on now that maybe we'll, you know, really, really decide to buckle down and do a much better video of the next listing. What are some of those things that you found over time really engage people? What can I do? I've got something coming on next week. What can I do in that video tour that is going to be more, that from, from your experience, is going to be more of a draw for the average person to watch? Absolutely. Um, so first off, it has to, the video has to start with a human in the first two or three seconds. Doesn't matter how beautiful the drone footage is. Doesn't matter how gorgeous the yard or the house is or the kitchen, all that stuff. People engage with other humans. And, and so in the first few seconds, you need to tell the viewer what's in it for them if they watch your video, just simply. So that's also known as a hook, right? So you say, you are not going to, if you think, the, you know, if you think the exterior of this home is amazing, you will not believe the pool in the backyard or something like that, right? Yeah, whatever that thing is that they're like, okay, great. I get to watch this video now. And there's going to be a whole bunch of little teasers along the way. And then as you build out those videos and you do more of them, you'll realize that the first seven to 10 seconds, if you can capture their attention, you'll only be buying the next 15 to 20 seconds because viewers are very, very fickle. They're gone in a second. Like I give up on a Netflix series that they spent 25 million on after three episodes, just because, you know, one night we decided to go for a walk and then we just forget about the series. So we have to remember that even though these are our little babies that we love so much, they are created for an audience that needs like constant, constant doses of dopamine. Just like, okay, great. This is beautiful. This is great. If it's got, let's say you, your house has a gorgeous backyard, but you think, well, I want to tell the story this way where I'm going to show them first the kitchen and then the living room will go upstairs and I'll, I'll hook them all around to the end, but then you launch your analytics and there's only 10% of the audience there when it gets to the money shot of the backyard. So when you watch our videos, we start with a strong five to 10 second first sentence, a hook. Hey, this is what's in it. If you give us two minutes or three minutes or 10 minutes of your time. And then after that, we show flashes of highlights to some music of each of the areas. Here's the wine cellar. Here's the view. Here's the kitchen. Here's the ensuite. Here's five or six big things. And then boom, hey, it goes right back. Hey guys, I'm Brad McKelm and I'm in the community of, and then I say my little bit there. I'll talk a little bit about the community, give people some context of where we're at. I always tell people why they should care about it. Always, this is why you should care about this listing. This is why this one's so special. And then from there, once you get someone in a minute into that video, they will watch for the entire duration like on average, 60 or 70% of the people will watch past minute one all the way to whether it's five minutes long, 10 minutes long, 20 minutes long. So a lot of people will say, Brad, you know, everyone's, you know, TikTok and Instagram reels, people's attention spans are so short. It's not true. On YouTube, you can watch five, 10, 15, 20 minute videos uh, happily. People will happily sign up and watch those videos because the reality is if they watch 35% of a two minute video, you, you know, you've got them for 45 seconds. If they watch 35% of a 10 minute video, 
you've got them for three minutes. And that three minutes is enough time for you to form a relationship with them uh, and actually uh, be memorable to them and actually have a chance of getting uh, some someone to call you. And it's a very, if you think about it, um, it's called a parasocial relationship and we all have them, right? If we, I don't know if we've all on here watched like Friends or some other sitcom, right? But when someone does something, you're like, oh, that's so like Chandler. That's just like Chandler to do that. Or that's such a Joey. That's such a Rachel, right? You know, these characters, you feel like you have relationships with them and you realize that they were just fictional characters. They were never even real. Not even the actors of those characters, right? But you have these parasocial relationships because we that's what we grew up staring at a TV and thinking of Johnny Carson or whoever these people were. We know what they were like. When people watch our videos, it's the exact same thing. So that's why we want to be in those videos because people will form a relationship with us. And some of those people will not like us. And that's great because we didn't have to go and drive around in a car all weekend with them or leave our family for some evening to go do them showings just to find out that they weren't really in it for us either. Okay. I see a couple other things. Okay. Do I ever There's use a ton of questions in here? Can you see that? Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go rapid fire here. Yeah, so, so um... okay. The, the make money on YouTube ads, uh, bottom line is you can't monetize your channel until you have a thousand subscribers. Uh, once you get that, um, the first month or so you might make a, a whopping 15, $20. Uh, so it's not a lot of money, um, in the beginning. And then what do you hire out early on and now? So early on, I taught myself, I bought myself about seven to eight grand worth of gear taught myself uh, how to shoot and edit the content because I wanted to create really good stuff. Turned out I really enjoyed doing that. So I wouldn't recommend it for everyone, but for the agent that wants to, um, you know, that's not selling as much as they'd like to, has a little bit of income to invest in it, has some time and has maybe even a, a personal interest in it, then go for it. Otherwise, hire it out. Um, the problem with, the big thing with hiring out, it's like hiring anyone. It's like, be very careful who you hire. Um, definitely look at their portfolio. Are they capable of doing it? Show example, show them examples of work that you want your videos to look like and go from there. Um, do I ever use videos to cover markets? Yeah. So, you know, what? um, it is actually a very, very smart thing to do. Um, the quickest way to make money on, on YouTube and get leads for clients and get buyers leads is to do those, those weekly videos on here's the top five reasons why you're going to love life in Cape Cod. The three things I wish I knew before I moved to Cape Cod, right? This is Cape Cod versus the other competing uh, market in the area. Um, what life is like here, right? Cost of living in Cape Cod, um, you know, a, a million dollar home in Cape Cod versus a $250,000 townhome or whatever it might be. You want to create those videos that are searchable. Those videos will live on YouTube and people will watch them for years to come, right? And then you can keep updating those annually. And then people get excited about that stuff because no one says, I wonder what the market statistics are for Cape Cod real estate. <laughs> what people say is, is now a good time to buy in Cape Cod, right? <laughs> right? I, Where's that lobster roll? Where's that great lobster roll? Exactly. Right. What's the weather like in Cape Cod? That's a better video than what's the market statistics because people don't care what the market statistics are. If their impression is that the weather is that they don't like it. Right. right. But once you buy them in on a couple of things of what it's like, you become the ambassador for your community. Like this, you are the authority for what it's like to live in your marketplace. People will love you. Those, those videos because Google owns YouTube, those videos will actually show up in Google search results. So remember years ago when every agent wanted to be at the top of Google, paying SEO, all that stuff, create a great video, Google will put you on the first page and answer those questions for you. So the answer is um, you can do those videos, but don't talk like a realtor, talk like a resident of the community. So you can talk about statistics, right? But low inventory doesn't mean as much to someone who's watching it. Whereas saying something really simple, putting in layman's terms, saying, you know what, there are very few homes for sale in Cape Cod right now, but guess what? Um, I have, I know of, you know, I've been selling here for 10 or 15 years. And so I actually oftentimes get, you know, the ability to uh, know some of these homes before they even hit the market. I, I always share them with my clients, those kind of things, whatever it is, but speak in, in language that they understand. Um, so, as someone talked about uh, YouTube uh, links on Instagram to use TikTok. And yeah, so actually I, I posted uh, a three and a half million dollar 15 second teaser on TikTok 
for, uh, it was the biggest home that I had listed at the time. Um, sold it three days before we released our full video tour and before it hit the market. And I brought the buyer and the buyer happens to be the guy with the four and a half million dollar home I'm selling. It was my first six figure commission. Voila. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And now I'm going out shopping with the owner of this jewelry store who's got this four and a half million dollar home. I'm going out shopping with his lawyer for a house. So uh, all from a 15 second TikTok video that you know, if you look back about a year, you'd see I'd, I probably was more opposed to doing. I just didn't think they had the same value. Um, but really, I look at TikTok, Instagram, all these other ways as a place to aggregate a bit of an audience. And then if you want to like weaponize that audience or monetize that audience, you drive them to your YouTube channel where they can start to consume your longer content. So that's essentially the, the flow. Uh, get them on Instagram, TikTok, or these other, and then have them drive driven over there to uh, wherever you want them, wherever you're going to convert the most, whether it's LinkedIn or YouTube or whatever. I love that. Um, to bring the one thing on to remember, hours, for sure. yeah, the one, the one <laughs> thing to remember when you start a YouTube channel is do not uh, share your links on Facebook. Um, you can share them maybe on, on Instagram, but you don't want to ever share that stuff. What you want is you want actually YouTube to have pure data. So you don't even want to tell 35 people in your peer group, go watch my video and subscribe to my channel. You want YouTube to find out where you belong. YouTube does a really great job at finding an audience, uh, indexing where you should show up in the search results. And if you're not getting the results, just keep working on your craft. Yeah. There's a couple of more questions. Uh, average yeah. cost. So this is average cost of your videos. If you were going to, yeah, because you do have a videographer now. So as we're looking to sort of, you know, roll out for some of us, what should we be looking at budgeting for, um, you know, a nice video? And I think length of time was also one of those questions. So we can answer both those at the same time. So if I was just starting out, um, we've gotten to the point now where we can go a little bit longer because we've built an audience and they don't mind. Um, in the beginning, the audience is like, who, do, you know, who's this person? Um, I would focus on your first few videos being three to five minutes long. And I would budget anywhere from three to five hundred dollars. Okay. But if someone is really talented, like really, really talented, um, and you know that they can create something really great for you, you've got a really special property that you think, oh wow, a year from now people could watch this and it would still get me business. Um, I can tell you, spending seven hundred dollars, eight hundred, nine hundred dollars, not a problem for me. Some of our, our recent uh, tours, so I've got one coming out here in a few hours. Um, that tour took us 25 hours to edit, another five hours to shoot. Um, I will likely spend $1,000 with the videographer on it. Plus, because the person works on my team, I spent another six or seven hours working on the video this weekend. Like I was matching up the music, color grading the footage, which means just adjusting it so it all looks pretty. And everyone says like, Brad, that's crazy. How do you do it? But when I sell this place, it's a $55,000 commission. And if I double end it, it's a six figure commission for me. I mean, I know as agents, we are, we get worried about Zillow and then we don't do anything different than every other agent. And it's like, we don't get to do, you don't get to do both things. And yes, you might have a great network, but, and you might have a lot of clients and you might have all that you need, but if you want more or you want to break into something more, it's just hard to imagine that you can get more without doing more. And so in my mind, I thought, well, I want to send that. I want to do this kind of uh, work. I want to spend my time with this. Uh, so I'm trying to create content that will bring me work for years and years to come. I think and that's an amazing point that, you know, why are we so willing? It's like when people are unwilling to buy organic vegetables, when you think about like, it's so important what we put into our yeah. bodies, right? Should we be spending all this money on other things and not what we're actually feeding our bodies? So the same thing with our business to spend that money and then to leverage. It's one of the things that I've gotten so much out of listening to you the short time I've been able to is that, you know, we, the leverage that you have gained in watching what mm -hmm. you've done, the leverage you've gained from those videos you made when you took a shower and you had a great house, you've already done it. You've already invested the money, yep. but the fact that that thing is living forever and you're continuing to use it in, in promotion, you know, sending it to us now, you know, um, can I ask you real quickly, is there one video you'd point out one address that if we wanted to take that to our videographer to say, this is what I wanted to look like. Is there one that you're super duper proud of in terms of the cadence and the length shorter, you know. Well, is this predominantly like a luxury market here? 
that, that no, I'm talking we're from to? all over the state. Oh, no, no, this is, I'm the only one from the Cape. Oh, actually, Kareem's here, but no, no, this is the yeah. whole state. This is actually the yeah. region, not, six states in New England. Where our okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Um, you know what, it's funny. If you were to go over our channel, you'll see a blend of a whole bunch of everything on there. Um, but essentially, we've got these million dollar tours. There's one that we did. Uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, most of them, all right. you, can, you can go check it out. Um, I would encourage you to go check them out, go down a rabbit hole, watch five or 10 different ones. I've got one on there called song house, which I'm, uh, actually really, really proud of, um, where we hired a local jazz singer, uh, to actually record an old 1960s standard. And then she toured through the house, sings her way through the house. Oh my God. And it, it's a really, it's a really fun video. Um, now that video doesn't have the same commercial success as some of the other ones. Right. However, when people see it, I can send it off to my clients. There's like when someone's considering what we do um, to list with us, I can then just say like, hey, here's a few links for you to check out. This one's kind of cool. This one's a little bit different. Um, there's another one on there called The Imagined Farmhouse. And The Imagined Farmhouse, I'm not in the video to the very end. I actually let the, um, the builder, the owner, tell the story of the home. He's a very well-spoken man, tells a beautiful story, had a very eclectic and unique home. And I wanted people to understand it. Um, you know, otherwise I, you know, with eclectic homes, people walk through them and they think, oh, that's weird. You know, why is, why is that like that? And there's, but there was such a beautiful story behind it that when I actually released that video about a year and a half, two years ago, Remax across Canada taught that video to, to all the agents. Like, so I was getting tagged from all over Canada, uh, like, Hey, we were watching this video from you. I didn't even uh, know that they were, <laughs> that they were doing it at first. And the big reason why is that it was. I mean, I'm really, really blown away at what we can create with a, you know, a decent camera that shoots 4k, a nice lens, a little stabilizer for our camera. And you put some good music to it now. And the music that's out there, it's, it's not like elevator corporate music anymore. Um, the royalty free music sites that you can find like epidemic sound and music bed. They're so it, it's, it's stuff that you'd happily listen to on the radio. It's such high quality stuff. That when you hear it all now and you put these things together, a compelling video with great, um, you know, with great music, and then you tell a bit of a story, people ultimately, they feel something. And if you want mm -hmm. to sell a property, not based on the price per square foot in the community, okay. you have to get people to desire it. You know, people don't buy the car of their dreams based on the spec sheet, how much torque it has or how well it handles in the corners. Not if they like the other one, like people people will go and buy the thing that the heart desires. And that's, that's what we're trying to get them to do is for them to desire the property. Yeah, no, that that's so amazing. So the questions are still coming in. I don't know. Yeah. I know people, we usually kind of schedule this half an hour and some people have, have reluctantly had to drop off. Christine, who's our CTO is like, I have to go to a listing point, but I don't want to leave. No worries. <laughs> so um, yeah, I got to figure out a way to, to bring you back in a more meaningful way. Brad, are you ever out here on the East coast? Um, you know what? I'm actually planning on coming there this fall. I'm going to be up in Maryland. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's down from here, but that's fine. Down yeah. from there. Yeah, uh, yeah, down from there. Know, I would love to know when, because, you know, we, maybe there's some way we can get you up here to, to, um, do a, a more of a workshop, um, with our, cool. we'll pay you uh, more of a workshop with our new England region. So I was also remiss. I've got people from Maine, Florida, Tennessee, where else? Uh, on the call, they wanted to make sure that they <laughs> they were nice. as well. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, I mean, I, I just wanted to point out a couple of things. One of the things you said was this, that, that this is really your way to scale. You know, using yeah. this video marketing on YouTube is a way to scale like no other. And I just think that's an amazing point. And also that you can be yourself in front of more people this way. You know, the yeah. scalability of doing this versus our, you know, our, our Facebook Live that we're so excited that we're doing a Facebook Live and putting in the, the text before we hit live. That's, you know, about where we are, some of us. Um, but I mean, the, the fact that we really can get ourselves and our authentic selves out there and to sort of get out of the way mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and also to make sure that the, the, the property is the hero, that we're mm -hmm. just the guide. I love that, you know. Um, so, uh, any last questions people have asked for your contact? I know if you just look for Brad McCallum on any of the social platforms, um, you'll be able to find Brad. We've put in your YouTube channel a couple times in the, cool. um, yeah, in the chat here. I don't know if you want to add any more contact info, Brad. Um, you might have some people that are interested in, um, reaching I'll out. Just, 
they're like yeah how far are you from lake tahoe oh my gosh i don't even know um i'm way north yeah i was thinking um kurt and um ellis of or maybe recommending brad for next year's celebration seriously like i just think he has a he really does. You guys listen to this, these kinds of things all the time. Brad really has a unique uh, perspective. Kurt, did you want to say anything or Ellis? Those are two muckety mucks in our RRC world. So that's why I'm bringing them up. <laughs> nice. no, thank you, Lisa. I just want to say thank you so much, Brad. I mean, video is something that scares all of us, even those that are used to being in front of cameras periodically. And you just brought that down to earth and made it seem so easy. And so many, like, like Lisa said, so many great nuggets. Thank you so much for the incredible value that you've given us today. I really appreciate it. Okay, so I'm just going to say this. Kurt, you look like just such a friendly, heartwarming <laughs> soul he is. that I would never get that from a photo. You know, I would just never get that otherwise, right? And to just to hear the tone of your voice, the kindness there, to me, that's just it. It's it everyone says this, you know, like, oh, Brad, you, you know, you must have done this for so long or, or really, you know, you, you must have a background. It's like, I don't, I don't have a background in any of this. I just, every time we did a video, we looked at it and we thought, what could we have done better? Could have, I showed more energy, could have been more excited. Um, and, you know, it's like that old saying, it's like, no one cares what you say until they know that you care. It's just that, right? This is our opportunity to really tell people like, hey, I, genuinely care. And all of us agents are telling our clients that all the time, but what can we do to quantify that? And, you know, the, now we're at a, I'm at a point in my business where we have this other weird thing that happens. Um, and that for any agent that actually really wants to go down this path, is you get to the point where all of a sudden you have an audience that's so large that builders and sellers and designers, they want access to your audience now. So I'm at a point now where by the end of this year, if we hit 25,000 subscribers, well, there's not much more than 30,000 people making a move at any one point in one year in Calgary. Now, all of a sudden we're a secondary MLS and that's a powerful, powerful thing uh, for your business. And, and, you know, so access to that now, all of a sudden, if you want to ask, you know, if you want to increase how much you ask for your commission, like you don't have to worry about, you know, the way tech and iBuyers and Zillow and all these other things might come into your, your market because your market doesn't want to work with the computer. They want to work with the human being, right? But void of knowing who that human being is, they very well might just work with whatever the new tech solution might be. And the thing is, you can't get to know Lisa or Kurt or any of you on this call and then opt to take less service or opt to work yeah with a computer, right? But if I don't know you guys, then it's going to be really easy to just think of it, um, you know, as, as what's best, uh, or, you know, what's easiest, right? So yeah, guys, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Ellis, did you want to say a couple, say something? You, I see you on my- Oh, I was just, I was just going to uh, ch chime in. I think we need a replacement for Jack Cotton eventually, and this guy's the heir apparent. <laughs> uh, we, if you ever, and this is for everybody, um, if you want more information, clearly look up Brad. There is a class that was spoken about, the luxury class. Jack does a great job of using story to sell a luxury home. He's got an amazing example of that in that class. And if you're looking for hardware and uh, gimbals and stabilizer, Jim Paulson's the go-to person. Look up any webinar that Jim Paulson has done, and he does them two or three times a year. He also usually gets on celebration. So Tahoe, $50 off with R V P R R C 21. <laughs> there goes Alice. Thank you again, Brad. A million. Thank we you really guys. appreciate our time with you. We will be all reviewing it. It's been posting to our Facebook as well as uh, to our YouTube. And thanks again for everything. Thank, Thank you guys. You. You're wonderful. I really appreciate it. All the Take best. Take care. All right. Bye.